Before we look at scopes in JavaScript, it helps to kind of understand what scopes are in general. Scopes are, uh, the, the concept of scope is not specific to JavaScript. There is uh, a similar concept in pretty much every programming language that I'm aware of. Uh, the idea is that a scope dictates a portion of the program where a particular variable is accessible, where a particular variable makes sense. And uh, if the variable in a particular scope is accessed outside the scope, well, that variable doesn't exist, right? So let me give an example for why scopes would be helpful. Now, let's say I have a variable here var equals 10. And uh, let's say this is somewhere in the middle of a long program, right? So I know it says line 21 here, but let's assume this is like line 521, for instance. It's just a huge program, and there is this line somewhere in the middle which says var equals 10. Now, just by looking at this line, would you be able to tell me if A is accessible everywhere else in the code? It is accessible at line 21 because that's where it's declared. But could it be accessible in other places in the program? Could it be accessible everywhere else in that program? Well, the answer to that question is, well, it really depends. It depends on how variable A is declared, where it's declared and all that stuff. But the reason it depends on that is not all variables are accessible in every place in every program. Right? It doesn't work that way. Variables are accessible only at certain locations, depending on how you've declared it. If every variable is accessible everywhere, then it's going to be chaos. There is really no saying which part of the program is working on which variable. It really doesn't work that way. There is usually controlled portions of the code where certain variables are active or not. So typically what happens is there is one global scope. There is one uh, scope which is ac accessible across the board for the program, but then there are these small pockets of scopes where you access certain variables, right? Now, let's say you're assigning the value of 10 to A in order to do something. There is the small portion of logic that you need to execute. So if A is needed only for that small portion, it doesn't make sense for you to publish A to every other portion of the code. What you'd like to do then is to kind of isolate a to a particular portion. So what you would do is you typically create like this box where A is accessible. You could have a bunch of other uh, variables over here and they all work with each other, but then they achieve something which is the result that you want. And then after the result is achieved, then all those variables can be discarded. They don't need to be accessible outside the box, okay? So you can create a bunch more boxes like this. So let's say you're working on some other piece of functionality. So there's this other box which contains those variables and those pieces of functionality. What's inside one box is not accessible outside the box. It's available only in that box. Okay, the other thing about scopes is that they typically have a hierarchy. So you can have a scope inside a scope. For instance, this is one scope. I can create one more scope inside it. Now the scope, the code inside the scope can potentially create variables and the code outside the scope can potentially create its own variables. Now the code inside the scope could access the variables outside. It could access the variable over here, but the code outside the scope cannot access the variable inside. All right, now that we've seen how scopes uh, work as a concept, now let's say you wanna create a scope. Now this is your code. Again, you don't want to make this available to everybody. You want to restrict it to a scope. How do you create a scope? It again depends on the language. For instance, if you were writing a code in C++ or Java, the standard way to create a scope is to do this, open close curly brace, right? So this curly brace is what's referred to as a block. Now, any code you put in that block is going to have the scope that is that extends as far as this block extends, right? So once this block ends, the scope of the variable ends. So this is a very simple way to create scopes in Java or C++. There are a bunch of different ways which let you create blocks. For instance, you can have an if statement. Okay, so this is a condition which always evaluates to true, of course, but this could be another valid condition. And now the if block has this open close. Now we have created a block. Any variable declaration over here is isolated to that block. Okay, could be a for loop, which again has the open close curly braces. So any of those open close curly brace uh, syntax elements creates a block between the open and the close. This is when it comes to languages like C++ or Java. But this is not the case in the, you know, when it comes to JavaScript. In JavaScript, having an open close curly brace does not create a new scope. Okay, so let's take a look at what actually does create a new scope in JavaScript. Now let's say this is your statement and you want to isolate this to 
a scope. You want to create a new scope so that it does not become a global variable. How do you create a new scope in JavaScript? So let's find out in the next video.